You've just arrived at your friend's birthday party and you realize you don't know anyone else there. To amuse yourself, you start thinking whether any two people in the room might share the same birthday. There are only 23 people there, but 365 days in the year, so the odds can't be that good, can they? Wrong! There's actually more than a 50% chance. Human brains are bad at guessing probabilities. When thinking about shared birthdays, we tend to think, what are the odds that a specific person shares a birthday with someone else? Which is quite low odds, about 0.3%. Really what we're asking is, if we check every pair of people, what are the odds that any pair shares a birthday? We tend to gravitate toward the small number of people there are, rather than the large number of connections possible between those people. This deceptive problem is known as the birthday paradox. Our brains aren't just tricked when it comes to shared birthdays. This is Set, a card game all about picking out groups of cards that fit a pattern. If you don't know the rules, we explain them in this other short video here, but basically you're looking for matching sets of three, where for every two cards in the deck, there is a unique third card that makes it a set. If you've never played before, looking at the table mid-game, you might feel like there's no way these random cards have a high chance of having a valid set, but you'd be wrong. There's actually better than a 92% chance there's a set in 12 cards at any point in the game. In fact, on average there's just shy of three sets on the table with any 12 cards. It's not bad odds. But why is that? Let's go back to the birthday party to figure that out. Let's say we've got a room full of 10 people and we want to find all possible ways to pick two out of the 10 people. Here's the math equation for it, but for brevity you can call it 10 choose 2. So if there are n people at the party, there are n choose 2 ways of selecting two people. For 23 people, there are 253 possible pairs. If we compare every person to every other, there's a lot of comparisons. Let's see if the problem gets easier if we try to solve the opposite problem first. What are the chances that everyone in the room has a unique birthday? The chance of two people not sharing a birthday is pretty simple. The first person has no possible conflicting days, so they can choose any of 365 days out of all 365 days, or 100% chance of no conflicts. The second person only has 364 out of 365 days to choose from because one of those days would conflict with the first person. Multiply those together, and the odds of the two people sharing a birthday are 364 out of 365, or 99.7%. If it's three people, then the first person has a unique birthday, and the second has the same 364 out of 365 chance. And now for the third person, two out of the 365 days are taken, which means the third person has a 363 out of 365 chance. To find the total chance that all three have a unique birthday, we multiply all those odds together to get 99.2%. We follow this pattern for more and more people, which gives us 49.95% for 23 people. But that gives us the odds that no one shares a birthday, which is the opposite of what we want. Luckily, you can take one minus a probability to get the opposite, which for 23 people gives us 50.05%, which we claimed. Okay, back to set. The deck of cards in set includes 81 unique cards, where 12 are presented on the table. Any pair of cards will have one and only one third card to make it a set. So if we take two cards out of those 12, how likely is it that one of the remaining cards on the table completes the set? Assuming that this is the start of the game, those odds should be 10 out of 79, or 12.7%. This is because there are 10 cards remaining on the table, and 79 cards other than the two that you chose. So we calculate 10 out of 79, which gives us 12.7% chance that the single card that fulfills the set is on the table, rather than in the deck. Those aren't great odds. If you played the game though, you'll notice that there are usually multiple sets on the table at any given time. If your strategy is to pick pairs of cards and look for the third, you'll probably find yourself frustrated by rarely finding that third match before another player calls out a set. Let's think about the problem in reverse, just like we did for the birthday paradox. The math for this is a little bit more complicated, but famed computer scientist Donald Knuth once wrote a program to calculate every possibility of finding no set when you draw n cards. Since we know there are 81 cards in the deck, we can calculate how many total ways there are to take n out of the 81 cards by using the math function 81 choose n. Let's test it on a simple case to convince ourselves that it's working. If we're only dealing out two cards, it's impossible to get a set. So the number of ways to take two cards and get no set should be all the ways to take two cards. 
This is 81 choose two, which means there are 3,240 ways to take two out of 81 cards. This is the same value as calculated by Knuth's program. If we subtract the number of possible ways of taking n cards by the number of setless ways, we'll get the number of ways we can draw n cards that do contain a set. So in this case, 3,240 minus 3,240 is zero. Perfect. Let's convert this into a probability. We know how many possible combinations there are, and we know how many form a set, so we divide the number of set cases over the total number of combinations. Zero out of 3,240 is 0% chance. Okay, let's do it for three cards. 81 choose three is the number of ways we can take three cards out of the deck, which is 85,320 different ways. From Knuth's table, we can see that there are 84,240 ways to not get a set when we draw three cards. Taking the difference, there are 1,080 ways to get a set from three cards. 1,080 over 85,320 gives us the odds that we drew a set, which is about 1.3%. Now we're getting closer to the real scenario of 12 cards, so let's keep going. At four cards, it's 5%. At five cards, it's 12%. And by the time we're at 12 cards, even though there are over two trillion ways to get a setless group of three cards, there are over 70 trillion ways to deal 12 cards. So the odds climb all the way up to 96.8%. This is a lot better than the 12% that we got when considering only two cards at a time. Just like the birthday paradox, the small scale is what we gravitate to, but the whole picture is a lot less intuitive and a lot more revealing. Probabilities are something that can take a lot of thinking to get right. But I would say that when you pull out set at the next birthday party you attend, the odds are good that you'll have a new appreciation for the game. <laughs>